and knowing a lot of people in the Labour Party, I have my doubts. I mean, Chris Hume had a rough time at lunchtime. Oh, I thought not too much. Well, I think people have been people have been very gentle with John and Evan today compared to <laughs> compared to Chris. He didn't get much of an applause. I mean, you guys got some applause, but mind you, there might be a Lib Dem plan. But then, on the, <laughs> other, then on the other hand, you know, Chris Hewn is much more in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. He's someone who voted against him. He's someone who's not followed. Now let's come back to the platform for a minute. Evan. Um, so, I mean, there has been a Labour Tory coalition at Westminster on specific issues, the Iraq war, foundation hospitals, tuition fees. So it's not wholly foreign, but I just want to deal with Alan Mann, if I may. Okay? Because, super, because superficially, obviously, you can see where you're coming from, okay? Everything you said superficially seemed to be logical, but it's inherently irrational to take the view that I don't deny people take. Let's say there was a genuine option of Labour and Conservative, and that if and there was a viable on the numbers, sufficiently on the numbers, so that John Reid could walk away, although he'd already walked away to the law in a sense, okay? Mm -hmm. Would you then say that it was betrayal that for, as a Labour person for either the Liberal Democrats to not to, to, to do that, or for the Labour Party to do it? No, you wouldn't. So it is, it stems from your view. And if the Liberal Democrats had done that, and the numbers of there had been equipoise, as it were, then the Conservatives would have said, that the Conservative voters would have said, this is betrayal. And some Liberal Democrat voters, who vote who are anti-Conservative, will say, this is disappointing, because they also don't understand uh, that we didn't win the election. You see, people say, you've changed from what you promised, and you're now doing things, you're now voting for things that you didn't put in your manifesto. Okay? We didn't win the election. Okay? So every party that loses the election fails to deliver. The Labour Party is failing to deliver its manifesto at Westminster. It has a clearer excuse, but logically, because it didn't win the election, that is the fate of every manifesto gets reneged on. The public do not get what they were voting for because it didn't win. Now, it's hard to get that across because you thought you're in government, therefore you can implement the whole of your manifesto. But there was a huge disagreement between our manifesto and the Conservatives. So all you can get from a coalition is a compromise, a halfway on some policies, or inclusion of some, and rejection of others, and vice versa for the other party. Now, I know that's hard to, to see, but the logic of your argument is there could never be a coalition if the argument was that by joining a coalition, half your voters, broadly, think you've betrayed them. But other countries manage to do this. And I don't think it's hopeless, by the way. Someone over here said that we're just not used, we're just not in a position in this country. The public, not activists, not people in my experience on Twitter, uh, but ordinary people actually support the idea of parties working together. It's only us weirdos that don't. Um, and that's understandable because we spend our time competing. So, but what matters in the end is how, what people vote for. I need to answer Margaret's question about why not the confidence and supply arrangement. Okay? Mm. It has many drawbacks and very few benefits for us. The drawbacks are that we're still seen to be propping up the Conservatives. So all the attacks we get from uh, Labour or people are from that side saying, why are you doing this? Why are you propping up the Conservatives? You've put in the Conservatives. All that stuff that we're criticised for, no doubt, in Berry or Burry, however you want to pronounce it. Very, okay. very. Well. <laughs> I know plenty of people who worry. Say, well, I. So that's not good. Secondly, they will do. A, they would do an emergency budget of the sort you saw. They would do the procrastination. There would be favours. They would say this is unstable, and it would be inherently unstable. They would cut and run, and you would have the extra two percent needed in this wonderful electoral system that David Lumpkin loves so much to give the Conservatives the thirty-eight percent or whatever it is that they needed to have an overall majority. Then you would have undiluted Conservative policy, which, believe me, would be much worse than what the Coalition is delivering. You can't, I can, you can't see it, but believe me, it would be much worse. Well, that's what I thought you'd say, actually. Okay, so that's why it's not, there's no advantage, okay? Well, there might be advantage to you, but you could distance yourself. Yes, but I mean, the, 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 you could do, that would be an advantage, except losing more seats in October 
is not much reward for distancing ourselves. And the final thing is that whatever you say about us, we like to be consistent on things that are fundamental to us. And we believe in uh, proportional representation, which means multi-party uh, results, which means coalition. And that's why Nick Clegg said, supported by all of us, that we would put stability of the country first, rather than well, short-term... That implies you have no sticking point. What would be your sticking point? What would the point at which you said, this far, no further? Well, if the Conservatives said we're not going to negotiate at all, essentially, on anything important, yeah, but, and we couldn't but, point but to the anything... the Conservatives stick to something that is well, really unfair... if the Conservatives unfair, had said no AB referendum, even, right? If they had said no electoral reform, believe me, I know it's not proportionate, or not much more proportionate under most circumstances, then there would have been no deal, because the party... What about a big a... cut in welfare? Well, the party voted for the coalition agreement, which included spending cuts over five years with the NHS protected, which means 25% cuts in everything else, and if there's more protection of education and defence, 33% cuts in everything else, including £8 billion, that's 4% of welfare cuts. Okay? So that's understood, because that was part of the agreement. But there were sufficient things identified in the coalition agreement, and there were, which are brushed over, but did involve fairer taxes broadly. Uh, I didn't, this gentleman said the £10,000 threshold hadn't been delivered. I mean, it's being delivered. The £8,000 threshold is being delivered, and that's several hundred thousand people on the lower end paying much less, much less tax than before. We insisted on protection of the child poverty targets so that within those welfare changes and tax changes, there is a significant increase in the child tax credit that means that no child will be brought, drawn into poverty by those arrangements. I don't like the housing benefit deal. That wasn't part of the coalition agreement. <coughs> and there will be some Liberal Democrats who vote against that. But the important thing is that the more people like me and John and others and Simon complain about non-coalition agreement, non-progressive policies, of which there will be many, the easier it is for Nick Clegg to say to David Cameron, my party won't abide this, to balance out the calls from the Redwoods and the David Davises of this world, demanding those policies. That's why we have a responsibility as a party <coughs> to speak out on some of those issues and, and why it's not going to stop many of us from doing that. Thanks. Certainly. Um, there's, a, there's a point about the, um, the what the AV referendum do. I don't think actually on the road to it, it could deepen the mistrust between the two parties. It could make them more antagonistic because I think it's being badly handled. I think it would be much better if we had two separate bills for the two things in the coalition of people. Yeah, yeah. It's actually going to get very heated. Uh, and that's, that's a bad thing. It's not in the self-interest of the Liberal Democrats, assuming they think it has a chance of winning, to be uh, accusing Labour of being in bad faith. And it's making it more difficult for those of us in the Labour Party, arguing for the Labour Party, to stick to an A and B position to do it. So I think we've got a job to get through. If we got there and we had a referendum, it might be one or it might be not. But I think it's important for Labour to be on the side of reform in this debate, whether it's won or lost. It might well be lost because of the cuts, because people don't vote on referendums on what they're for, and it's Labour voters who will decide it. Even if it's lost, I think the Labour Party's future is a more pluralist party. I think we should be on that side of the argument and making that case. And actually, if it was lost, and Labour had sort of switched this way and that, the Liberal Democrats would say, see, Labour switched this up. So it's sort of, you know, stitch this up. If it's lost, it'll be lost because the Taxpayers Alliance and the right-wing pressure groups are creating a campaign from the right to defeat the Liberal Democrats on an AD referendum. I think Labour should take sides on that issue, actually. And if we got it, it would help to shift the tribalism we've talked about. Now, tribalism should be whipped. Should be whipped. Should the, should the leader be absolutely doing everything that I think you possibly have, can to get everybody freedom, out of campaign? You shouldn't have freedom to dissent in the shadow cabinet. There's no need at all no, to make an agreement to differ on the shadow cabinet. I mean, of course, there'll be some Labour backbench voices who will have a different view of electoral reform. You don't, you can't, you know, you don't... But the payroll, the payroll... Yeah, yeah, I, I think we should make, let's make it a policy, let's see the leader speak about that. Course. And then, yeah, and then, uh, I mean, the problem is we didn't have that big a democratic debate in the party it arrived last year from the leader's yeah. speech. If we got it, it would be important <coughs> for this tribalism debate. Because the thing about our politics now is you have to campaign most viciously against the people you agree with, basically. Should we so ask you what they think about so Do you think the la that Labour should be whipped into uh, supporting the AD referendum.